first thing, we defined a chord uh, on Thursday, but uh, we're going to talk about them again today. We're going to start by talking about any diameter is considered a chord, but chords uh, may also be shorter than the diameter. The diameter would be the longest chord in a circle because it goes through the center from edge to edge. That would be the longest chord. But for example, in this picture, AB is considered a chord. A chord connects any two points on a circle. A chord connects any two points on a circle. So a DA could also be a chord. AC could also be a chord. DC could be a chord. CB could be a chord. I mean, we can make a bunch of chords in here. These would all be considered chords in addition to what was already drawn there from A to B. Okay, chord connects two points on a circle. Now, what we're also going to focus on today are the angles. First of all, a central angle. Central being the key word here, central center. Okay, an angle of measure less than 180 degrees with the vertex at the center of the circle. That's the key. The vertex of a central angle is at the center of the circle. And the sides of that angle would be radii. So AOB, angle AOB, would be a central angle here. This angle right here would be a central angle in this circle. And central angles are always less than 180 degrees. Each central angle splits a circle into two arcs. Okay, it splits the circle into two different arcs, the arcs referring to the portions of the circumference. So the minor arc is the interior of the central angle. The way that I remember minor arcs is they are always less than 180 degrees. Minor, less than. Those words kind of go together. <clears throat> and so sometimes um, we use what we call simple arc notation, which just uses the initial and terminal points to name a minor arc. But that's only for minor arcs. And then the major arc would be considered the remainder of the circumference of the circle. It's always going to be greater than 180 degrees. Okay, I'll let you finish writing this. Okay, let's label the pieces of our circle here. The central angle AOB, I already indicated that to you, but uh, if you want to kind of outline uh, the sides of the angle as well, okay, AOB, I think it's very helpful when we get to doing some of these problems. Uh, draw all over the pictures, guys. Okay, they're there for your reference. Um, don't think that there's something wrong with, with labeling some things. So there's central angle AOB. The corresponding chord is going to connect the ends of that angle. So AB, right there, that segment that was originally on the picture, not the additional chords that I drew in there, but the original one, that's the chord AB. The minor arc, when you're doing arcs, you do them just like you do angles. You start with the first letter, you go around the circle to the next letter, and then you continue on to the third level. So I have uh, traced minor arc ACB here. I've traced that in green. Notice it's less than half of the circle. A circle is uh, composed of 360 degrees, so a minor arc is going to be less than 180, less than half of it. The major arc, uh, the same thing. Uh, you start with A, is blue. You start with A, you go to D, and then you go to B. Okay, so the blue portion is the major arc that corresponds to that central angle. Um, one more thing about the minor arc, it could also just be denoted A, B. Okay, it could just be denoted A, B. Now, how do I know which way to go to get from A to B? 
Well, that's only used with minor arcs, so I'm going the shortest distance from A to B. So if you see any arcs with only two letters, you're going shortest distance from the first letter to the second letter. So I wouldn't go counterclockwise to get from A to B. I would go clockwise to get from A to B because that's the shorter distance. Okay, questions about any of our terminology so far? <coughs> So, let's look at some um, properties here. Oops. There we go. Okay, the degree measure of a minor arc is equal to the measure of the corresponding central angle. So if you know that the central angle has a degree measure of 85 degrees, then that corresponding minor arc would also be 85 degrees of the entire circle. The degree measure of a major arc is 360 degrees minus the measure of the corresponding minor arc because it's the rest of the circle. So we've got 360 total, so the remainder of it would be subtracting the minor arc. Okay, so let's look at some calculations here. They tell us in this diagram to the right, the measure of AOB is 160 degrees. So AOB is this angle right here. So we've got 160 to the right of O. Put it in there however we can. So they ask us, what's the measure of arc ACB? Well, 160 is the central angle, so ACB has the same degree measure. It's 160 degrees of the circle. So how much does that leave us for arc ADB? 200. We used up 160 of our total 360, and we've got 200 left. Okay, now here's my challenge for you. On the diagram to the right, show possible locations of a point X so that the measure of arc AX is 90 degrees. There are two places where you could put an X where the measure of arc AX would be 90 degrees. X should be about right here or right here close to D is one way to go, and then um, about halfway between C and B, that would, that would create about a 90 degree angle right here in the center. Okay, the central angle is 90 degrees, that means your arc is 90 degrees, or another way of looking at it, a fourth of your circle, okay, from A to X. Okay? Alright, so, uh, now this is one of these kind of like, well, Duh, that makes sense kind of statements, but we need to write it down anyway. Two arcs have the same measure if and only if their central angles are congruent. Okay, that's kind of obvious. We know that central angles have the same measure as the arcs, then the arcs are only going to have the same measure if the angles do. The measure of two minor arcs are equal if and only if their corresponding chords are equal. Okay, the measures of two minor arcs are equal if and only if the length of their corresponding chords are equal. So we haven't talked about the chord that much, but that makes sense too because you're still dealing with right triangles, so um, the length of those chords need to be the same thing. Um, now, there is just a little slight detail here in vocabulary. Um, why did I use congruent in the first one and equal in the second one? Um, I use congruent in the first one because it's talking about the angles. You talk about angles being congruent, but when you introduce the word measure, then you're talking about an exact number, and so you use the word equal. That's just a little tidbit I want to throw in there. Okay, so 